Welcome to Deb's K&D Springers here at my home in my grooming shop. And this is Dog Tricks of the Trade. Neil, my cameraman, and my grip, since he's been cleaning up the floor all day, he's going to hold this wide screen on top. And he's real tall, too. How tall are you, Neil? Six foot. Woo! That's a good one. Okay, now this is pretty much done through here, as you can see. And this up here, the Bermuda Triangle from the occiput behind the shoulders down to the elbows. That triangle, that is the very last place I trim on every dog. And I call it the Bermuda Triangle because that's what it is. If you're gonna screw up your grooming somewhere, that's where it's gonna get screwed up. So that is the last that I do. Belgium comb is a must. Okay. Now, by angling this comb, that's what's going to give you the depth. There's going to be some places along here that need to be shorter, some need to be longer. It's up to the individual dog. And again, the very last image that you want to create for the judge is a straight top line, flat, flat top line. All right, so we're going to start back here at the tail. Now, you see how my comb and what I'm doing with this, and depending on how I bend the comb, that's much hair, and I'm just going right across the top of that comb. So this is what's called back combing. All right, so um, I am going against the hair. And I'm just trimming what's popping up over the top of this comb. Now, this is the side that I have not trimmed yet. And every time you go over it, you take your brush and you brush. This is sticking up. So I'm going to get rid of that. It's just a matter of doing a little bit, doing a little bit, doing a little bit. This is why I'm saying don't wait two months in between trimming these show dogs. It gets to be too much. Too much for them, too much for you. And I certainly wouldn't tell you at that point to groom it all in one setting. I might do it over the course of a few days. Because it's just it's too much for the dog. Okay. I'm gonna come up here now. I'm gonna stop before I get into the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, step back. And up. There you go. All right, now look how long all this is. You see how long? How long this is? That's real long. But I'm going to keep it long. Okay, now I'm pulling that hair up and I'm just trimming off the top. If that is real long in there, and this was fairly short back here, then that means the last time I groomed that dog, I did that for a reason. I don't know why right now, but you are not gonna leave the same length here. It's gonna be different lengths the whole way up because at the end, when you brush all this back, you wanna stand back and just see a, a straight top coat. And all that, the whole, the whole top line of this dog can be sculpted in by hand. Right. You have no idea what you're looking at when you're outside this ring and you're looking inside the ring at these dogs. Trust me. You have no idea. Especially when they're being handled by the better handlers slash groomers. It would just amaze you what that dog really is underneath all that grooming. OK, 
Okay, now this is pretty much done through here, as you can see. And this up here, the Bermuda Triangle from the occiput behind the shoulders down to the elbows. That triangle, that is the very last place I trim on every dog. And I call it the Bermuda Triangle because that's what it is. If you're going to screw up your grooming somewhere, that's where it's going to get screwed up. So that is the last that I do. Here is the picture that I want to show the judge. That nice flat top line. Okay, now this dog actually has a very good, very, very, very good top line. So there isn't a whole lot of cosmetic grooming. And his front end is gorgeous. His front end in his shoulders and his length of neck, I mean, his whole front end is to die for. There won't be a lot of corrective grooming there, but there is all this bushy, gross hair. I'm going to do a little bit today, but until I get that towel flat with a 24-hour soaking wet bath. Now, he's dry. I'm not going to put the towel on for 24 hours. He's going to go back in the bathtub today and get soaking wet and re-toweled and then dry again. this side which still needs work okay um, I haven't even touched this side yet as you can see this is still the woolly Siberian north over here and I'm not gonna worry about that right now um, I hope to get into what I call the Bermuda Triangle today that is the area from here the back of the skull this little bony aperture that's called the occiput to the shoulder blades, behind the shoulder blades, down to the elbow. This triangle, I call it the Bermuda Triangle because that is the most difficult thing to trim and it is also the easiest thing to trim and screw up, for sure. If you're going to screw up something on your dog's grooming, that is where it's going to be, is in that Bermuda Triangle. And there is no one instruction book on any of this top coat work. Every single dog is different. And let me draw your attention once again to you always have a picture of a show springer right over where you're working so your eyes can go to that and then back to what you're doing. Go in the magazines, pick out a dog you like, but I'm gonna trim this dog to make him look like that. That is the picture and there it is. Now again, with back combing, the angle which you hold the comb, that's going to determine the length of hair. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off anything that's on top of that comb. So if I go like this, there's that much hair. If I go like this, there's a lot more hair. So it's all about how I'm angling this comb. And just you're just gonna have to move the camera around. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. My scissor is right along there. Now, when you have a dog with this much top coat, what you're gonna have to do is just keep going over and over and over it. And I do not recommend you do it all in one day. It's too long for one dog to stand on the table all day. So my scissor is always right there. I'm never going this way or that way. Okay, 
see now when i feel like i've gotten that off then i can turn my scissor around and again the blade of the scissor should always match the direction of the coat i would trim this way here i would trim this way here i would trim this way here however the hair is growing that is the way my scissors are going and when you're using a thinning shear it's one two or one and move on you never strike the thinning shear more than two times in one spot we'll end up with holes 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 okay and again i'm using this wide not the narrow i'm only cutting and it's the angle of the comb that is determining the length of my cut That was a long one. He still doesn't sleep in his towel quite right. Don't over trim your top coat. The Bree standard says the dog has to have a top coat. You don't go so short. There isn't. You don't like it wavy when you do your toweling. That will make the top coat go flatter. I mean, co compare the video work that we did last week with this dog, and he's been living in a show town now for the past three or four days. It's a big difference. I'm going to go up to the neck and shoulders again. Oh, I sure don't like that. put on the 7F blade. You, maybe you want a front shot of what I'm doing here? Yeah, okay, this that's sticking up from the side, just to take my 7F blade. I'm just lightly going to go over that. What a big difference that made already. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of thinning shear work. A little bit at a time. Down here, it's all about sculpturing. Take your time. This is an art form the show grooming. Now again, because I don't like the way this top coat is falling, it's still too curly for me. So for his home groom, I would stop at about where I have him now and then let him wear the towel again overnight and get this. Don't try to cut off curls by back combing. That won't work. You will get rid of the curls by properly toweling the dog overnight and then the next night and then the next night don't cut the curls off worst thing you can do that's when you really get into trouble now can you see this you want to take the camera and show them this maybe from my angle see all this sticking up that's because he needs to be toweled better mm -hmm. and then sleep on it. I am not going to cut that off. Do not cut that off. Okay. Big mistake people would make. Leave it alone. I know that when this gets toweled, that will go down flat. So, like I said, don't make the mistake trimming of trimming a curl or trimming something that's sticking out, especially when you have the sense that that's going to lay flat once he's toweled better.
Okay, now let's stand back and look at the whole dog. Okay. Right. I mean, go back and look at the first footage that we shot last week of him after two months of being grown out to what we have now. And that's certainly a huge difference. <laughs> And like I said last week, when you're trimming them at home, getting them ready for the dog show, don't over trim them. I don't finish the trim at home because he's going to wear the towel, he's going to be in the car, he's going to be moving around. And when I take the towel off the next day, this hair is going to be laying different. So you trim for the day that you're showing him. So leave yourself some hair. Okay, big, 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 big difference from last week. Now, because he still has all this wave, I'm not going to trim any more of that. For me, I would want to put him in a towel again and get that flat before I futzed around with it. I'm going to turn him around and work on this side, which has not been worked on at all. I mean, ever in this entire process. I didn't work on it last week, and I haven't worked on it yet. Now, can you see? Mm -hmm. The bar isn't in your way? Nope. All right. I'm trying to just get that out of the way for you guys. All right, so this is really bad. This is not, he hasn't been sleeping in this towel right. But I can show you, you're gonna lift this up I don't even have this up against the skin here because I want to leave this quite long until I know what I am doing with it. I'm just going to take off a little bit at a time. You see along here? Uh -huh. I'll just do this. See how the hair is coming up over the comb? Mm -hmm. And then I'm just cutting the hair that's on the top of the comb. That's why it's called back combing. Now, here I'm actually lifting the comb up because I want this to be longer. Stop, brush, take a deep breath, don't rush. It's all about sculpturing. Just like sculpturing, if you take that mallet and that pick and you go clunk on something that you did not mean to take off, then you have ruined your statue. Same thing with this hair. You can always take hair off. You cannot glue it back on. Although there is a very funny story about that. In the terrier world, I was, I was raised in the terrier world of handling. Peter Green, all the greats. And yes, there was a great Welsh Terrier that was at Westminster Kennel Club. And somehow the dog overnight had gone in here and gnawed a big hole right in here. And if you know anything about Welsh Terriers, you know, all this is, all this is full. The top coat's not too unlike ours, and then the legs. So suddenly now this dog's got this big nasty hole there, so. 
what the handler did pretty much is that he, he took a whole bunch of hair like this and he stuck it in the hole and he took the dog in the group ring and he won the group. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so in some respects there you, you there you <laughs> but for your for you you can take hair off but you can't glue it back on. But that was one instance where, oh yeah, it got glued back on. And I won't say what dog and I won't say what handler because I was there and I saw it happen. <laughs> it's one of those things that just goes to my grave with me. We were all standing ringside laughing. So we knew exactly what was going on. Dog shows can be fun, see gang? They can be fun. Fun, fun, fun. Well, I certainly don't like all that. Well, let's work on that. Ha. Huh. Lift it up. Well, because I can't really get to the right angle, here I am taking this, and rather than here, I'm taking off the top of the hair there, but I'm still lifting out up with the comb. Sorry, Carson. I'm just gonna have to deal with that again. Pretend you're an old English sheepdog, honey, just for a few minutes. Are we getting a good camera angle on that? Because uh -huh. all this is good. Now, look how much nicer that is. Already. Now I'm going to step over here. I can't go too crazy because he's too curly. And I don't want to do a finished a finished trim on curly hair. Bad, bad, bad mistake. Don't use your scissors to cut out the curls. Use your blanketing towel to get rid of the curls. And on a liver springer, you use your pumice stone to get rid of the curls. Oh yeah. I can't wait to do that one. I'm going to let Kira's top coat grow back in, and then we're going to do pumice stone, and that is the most magical thing in the world to me, because this is a breed with hair, and I can trim any springer to look like anything as long as I have hair. And that's another reason why I say you have got to judge this breed moving. You cannot judge this breed standing. There's too many top-notch handlers and breeders that know all these grooming tricks that can make a very average dog look good standing. It's when they move. That is the proof in the pudding. Plumbing might look good when it's sitting there, but when you turn the faucet on and the water squirts everywhere, it doesn't work right. Well, then, there you go. Now, I'm not twisting and turning because of the camera. This is actually what I would be doing grooming this dog. Just trying to get my body in a position where I can take these shears and the blade of these shears and follow the direction that the coat is falling. It's here. Follow the direction of the coat and where it's curly. Do not cut this off. Boy, you know, you just want to get antsy and get rid of it. And before you know it, you've cut it off, and then you're going to have hair that sticks up, and it's going to look horrible. 
for three months waiting for it to grow back out again. Don't do it. We will take care of that in our toweling. I'm not even going to touch this until he would be re -toweled. I'm not even going to go there. It's too curly. It's too wavy. I do not know what I'm looking at. So he would just get, I would wet his top coat, retow him, and look at that tomorrow. I'm sure as heck not going to get into it today. Same thing. I'm going to put him up against that gray cabinet. If you want to move the camera around. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, you see, you see how some of this hair sticking up there? Okay. Can you see that, Neil? Uh -huh. Okay. Do not cut that off. Again, that's because he laid in the towel wrong. Don't cut that off. God, then it's just going to stand straight up like that in the show ring, and it's going to be horrible, dreadful. Don't do it. Leave it alone. Those are the kind of mistakes that people make in this Bermuda Triangle. You can see it real clear there. See it? Yeah. Don't cut it off. Leave it alone. All, this too. Don't cut it off. Leave it alone. I can see where the towel was laying. You can see the lines of the towel. Just leave it until, you know, I have an opportunity to, ha to, to towel him better. If I'm starting with a dog this overgrown, yeah, it could take me three days. Get off X amount of hair, re -toweling. Get off X amount of hair, re -toweling. Until I get down to that final show dog length. I'm gonna go back over, so this is up against the gray wall. I think people can see better up against the gray wall. So can I. I don't want to be looking into that mirror. So don't trim these things off. Don't trim that off. All that's going to lay flat when you get the towel back on him. So I'm just not even going to look at that. And don't go too crazy there either because that's a towel mishap. The towel wasn't put on right. So that's another plate. Don't cut that off. Just leave it alone. Don't cut any of this off. Just leave it alone. Trust me, if I towel him, all of that will be perfect when I take off the towel. So if I trim it off now, it's going to look horrible. Oh, it's going to take you three or four months to grow it back out. And everybody that you go to, help fix this, help fix this. And they say, it can't be fixed. You have to grow it back out. So just don't do it. Okay. So for at home, this is pretty much where I would stop. Because like I said, I do want to leave some hair on him. So I have something to work with tomorrow and I am going to have to re him to finish these spots but I can tell you that if I re him put him up on this table tomorrow and just took the towel off I wouldn't have to do any trimming all this would be laying perfect ta-da well, pretty much done as far as I'm concerned he's pretty much Ready for the show ring. What do you think, Dad? Wonderful. All right. And just to show you the different lengths, remember this hair is actually coming all the way over into this tail to here, uh -huh. from here to here. You want to leave all that hair long. Okay. On this dog, it's about that length. Every dog is different. Okay. Then we get in here, it's a little bit longer in here because I'm working into the shoulders and the neck. So there's more length from the mid back to here.
than anywhere else in this back combing, then I start to go short again to blend it in. So it's shorter, then longer, then shorter. That's probably the rule of thumb for all of them. But how I would trim this front end if the dog needed corrective grooming would be entirely different than what I just did because I didn't do anything with this dog. All I did was took, took off excess hair and just left him. All right, here's the top of his shoulder blades. Here's his elbow, okay? And remember, like I said, his breastbone is right there. There it is. I'm up against it with my finger. So if I can get that ear out of the way. So his breastbone's there, top of his shoulder blade's there, and then the elbow's there. So when they're talking about a 45 degree angle, there it is. They're less angulated behind. You don't want a 45 degree angle in the back. So here's this point, this point, and this point. And the, the elbow should be way under this dog. If I put a piece of cardboard up here, a third of this dog should be in front of its elbow. A third of this dog should be in front of its elbow. So that is a dog with a very nicely made front end. When all of this sits way under this dog and all of this is out here. That is a good shoulder. And I don't know, you can't get any prettier than that. Can't get any prettier than that. And there we go. All right, well, thank you for joining me today on top coat work with an English Murray Spaniel. And this is Carson, and I'm sure that he's glad he's done for the day. What do you think, Carson? Huh? Yeah. He says, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. He's a good boy, though. Yes, he is. He's a good boy. Okay. Oh my God, it's quarter to seven. Definitely, definitely. Time for that glass of wine. The coffee has absolutely worn off and the wine hasn't kicked in yet. So Carson and I are both going to say bye bye. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and our Springer Club plans to bring you many, many more. Please know that we are not getting monetized by YouTube yet. We have to have 1,000 subscribers. I have thousands of hours of people watching these videos, which makes us very happy. But our Springer Club could use the revenue with all the hard work we put in. So please subscribe to our channel. And if you would like to support us, please go to PayPal. The address is listed here. Thank you again. Bye-bye.